How's it going YouTube? It's Apoc aka Brandon and today I'm going to show you how to make this kind of two worlds effect in Lens Studio using opacity textures and render targets. There's a couple ways to actually do this but this is kind of the easiest way. So basically what we're going to do is have this dark world like back here. See all this area is going to be dark with some sort of color correction and then we're going to have this street cutting through. You know what? Don't even talk about what I was just drawing there. <laughs> we're going to have this street cutting through. Uh, that's going to show us a different scene. So we're going to have two scenes at once and then something moving across the screen that, you know, shows you the other one. Okay, so the first thing I have is the light streak that we're going to need to replicate what he's trying to do. I just drew this myself really quick in Photoshop. Looks like that. Uh, if there was a background, it would look like that. You usually want to try and get rid of any white space, you know, crop that out. Or if you just draw one line like this, you can right click, quick export as PNG, and it's going to trim it out for you. So we're going to need two render targets, and we're, which means we're going to need at least two cameras. Um, we're actually going to be using three cameras in this scenario, but uh, let's just get started adding them. So add in a screen image. It's going to make an orthographic camera, and then right click your orthographic camera and hit duplicate. We need two of them. So in your second one, go ahead and click on it and then come over to the layers, add new layer, layer one and click on that. And we're going to change this to a paucity, uh, the name. So now that is rendering the yellow layer called a paucity. Uh, so anything underneath this, you're going to click on the top one shift and then you can click this little dot and change it or you can actually come up here and click on it there to select that. And that basically sets the screen image to the yellow layer, which is called opacity in this case. And that layer is being rendered by this camera. So now we want to make another render target. So come to your yellow camera here. We're going to actually change the name of this to opacity camera, just so I can refer to it better. I can't see what I'm typing. <laughs> so on your opacity camera, click on it over in the inspector, go to render target, click on render target and add another render target. Just click the plus button render target. So now you should see render target two there. To make this easy, we're gonna change this in a minute, but change your capture target or your live target, one, whichever one you wanna use uh, to render target two. And now, if you choose live target, come down here and make sure you have live camera selected. If you're on capture target, make sure you have capture mode selected because that changes it. So I chose live camera. So I come down here, click the arrow where it says iPhone or some phone name, uh, and then choose live camera right here. Okay. Like I said, right beside is capture mode if you chose capture. So now we need to build an opacity texture. Now opacity textures are black and white. They can also be, I believe, black and red, but black and white is kind of the standard go-to and that's what we're gonna be doing. So we need the background to be black. The way to do that is change your stretch mode on this image, which is the one under the opacity camera, to stretch so it fills the whole thing. Click on material, add a new material, and choose unlit. It doesn't have to be uber unlit, none of that fancy stuff, just unlit. It's going to give us this white screen, which is nice because that means we can change the base color, and it's just going to apply it onto the white texture. So black times white uh, texture just makes black. So it's perfect for us. Uh, we don't even need to have a blend mode in this case. But the next thing we're going to do is click on your full frame, frame region three here. Click on add and add another screen image. So this is going to be our light streak. And you just need to drag into your texture here, your light streak. So just go ahead and do that. Now you may notice when you add this image that it changes the layer by default orthographic. So make sure you change that to opacity up here. Or like I said, you can click the little dots here. If you don't see these dots, by the way, come up here and you can see under the eye, you have all these options to check. So check layer, and that will show you that. Checking render order is another nice thing because technically I can make the black render in front of this uh, just by changing the number here, but we're not gonna mess with that right now. Okay, so this is what this looks like. I'm gonna animate it as well, just because I feel like that's something you guys are gonna wanna do. So to do that, we're gonna come up to objects, click on plus, and look for helper scripts. Hover over that and choose Tween Manager. Let this load in. It's going to take a minute. You're going to see Tween Manager pop up in here when it's done like that. Click the drop down on Tween Manager. There's going to be an examples 
thing. You can look through that if you want, but you're not going to be able to see it without changing the layer. So we're just going to delete it because we don't need the examples. Then click on this and drag it all the way up to the top above everything. So Tween Manager is at the top of the scene. That means it's rendered first. And we're going to be accessing these scripts. So we need to be making sure that these scripts exist before we try and access them. Okay. Go back to your light streak, add component, add a script. This is how we're going to add in the tween. So after you click on add script here, click on this little box that has none in it. Click the drop down for the tween folder, go into the tween types folder, and you'll see tween screen transform. Now, if you're using like a world object, you'd use tween transform, but screen transform, you can see right here, screen images have a screen transform. So click tween screen transform. Now we can make this rotate, scale, we can change the anchors, we can change the offsets. We're gonna be using position. And the first thing we're gonna do is change the loop type to ping pong. So it's gonna go back and forth. And I'm just gonna start this at negative one X, which is left to right to one X. So that's not really, I want it to go all the way across. So I think it's gonna need a lot more. I'm gonna go negative 10 and see if that goes all the way out. And it does. So 10 plus will probably get us all the way to the other side as well. Cool, now it's going back and forth. Come down here and switch your camera to the one that is not this one, okay? Now, if you're, uh, you know, you want this streak to go all the way across the, the screen, by the way, there's another thing you'd have to do. You can do fit if you have it touching the edges. Um, you can also do stretch and it will try and stretch it out. That's gonna change the size. You can do fill and cut. So just play around with these see the ones that work for you. In my case, I used kind of a common screen ratio, uh, which makes it work pretty nicely with the fit mode. But you know, one of those other fill modes could work uh, better for you. All right, so yeah, like I said, come down here, change your mode from live to capture or capture to live, depending on which one you start on. And you'll see the other render target. Go in scene config, you'll see the render target I'm talking about right there is render target. It doesn't have a two next to it. So this is our new screen image. And what I want to do is basically have this image be showing you the default screen texture. So you can also have this showing another render target, whatever you want, but we're just gonna use the device camera texture for now. So we're gonna to need to make a new unlit. So click on the material for this one. And by the way, we're right here. Click on the material, add another one, add unlit. You can name these materials as we go, uh, but you don't have to. And on this one, we do have to change the blend mode to normal. Don't forget, change it to normal. Now, under base texture, click on it and click on device camera texture. And boom, we see the original texture. And this is where it gets crazy. We're going to add in an opacity texture. Okay. Now, this opacity texture is going to be using render target 2, which is this opacity texture that we built. You're not going to see anything right now, but if we come to the perspective camera here, which is, you know, affecting the scene, but it's not affecting the device camera texture because this is the raw camera feed unedited by Lens Studio. So click on your perspective camera, add new, and add in a color correction. We're going to do something easy to see, so we're going to do black and white. And now you can see that we have this streak that is showing me the original device camera texture, but the other scene is black and white. So that's how you do it, guys. But if you want to keep going with this, uh, you may want to have uh, another scene. How do we do that? Okay. Duplicate your camera. Make another render target. So we're going to have render target three now. By the way, change your live target back to the first render target. So now if you're on live or capture, you're seeing the same thing. Okay, we're on our second perspective camera and we're gonna change this black and white. So we're just gonna delete that, add a new one and add in color correction. Let's do one that's also very noticeable. I think Miami, yeah, that's very noticeable, <laughs> okay. Um, and change all the layers here. So change the layer this renders, make a new layer, layer one, which is an orange layer. Click on that, make sure you deselect it because otherwise it will have multiple that is rendering. Deselect the default, change this to layer one. Come down to everything below it and change its layer to layer one. And then come to your screen image that was rendering the vice camera texture and change that to render target three. And now it is rendering what this camera is rendering. You can also add orthographic cameras to this 
you know, render target. As long as your camera is rendering to that render target, it's going to be the one that shows up in that streak. Uh, you can use this as well to add in face retouch on these, which is another reason you wouldn't want to use device camera texture because you're not going to be able to add in a face retouch. So in this case, you have to add a retouch to each of these. Make sure your layers are being set properly. This camera is only rendering things to render target three that are on the orange layer. So Miami has to be on the orange layer one. It's not going to render anything else. So make sure you have those layers set properly. And yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully you understood this. I know I went a little fast, but uh, I've been sick and I'm running out of time to do stuff today. So wanted to get this out really quick. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this helps. Shout out to uh, what was the name? Augusta or however you say that uh, for, for asking about this and hope I helped you, man. Peace.